We need trees to survive and we need water to survive, but we do not need hate to survive. In fact, it's the opposite. Hate is like an open wound we need to fully let heal instead of constantly reopening it. And a way for it to heal is if we express our outlooks upon hate openly. If we all just shut our mouths and wait for another person to get hurt because of someone else's prejudice, what good is that? When we point out injustice, teach others to look beyond politics, and identify disinformation designed to incite violence, we can call out hate for what it is. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, hatred paralyzes life, love releases it. We need to speak up and make others aware of hate and tackle it at its core. An immediate attack of hate I can think of is the attack on the United States Capitol that took place on January 6th. So many crazy feelings went through my mind, like, why were people doing this? It was absolutely shocking to see the storming of the institution and witness the physical violence and hateful rhetoric the protesters displayed. The emotions for the nation left us feeling helpless that day. What shook me to the core was watching people climb the walls of the Capitol building like animals. The irony is that Donald Trump's campaign for president wanted to build a wall to keep out illegal immigrants from the South. Yet now, his own supporters were in a state of anarchy and turning into the people that Trump so despised and wanted to keep out of the country. Now I have a question for you. Are white nationalists nothing more than the Ku Klux Klan disguised under the cloak of nationalism? I think not. White nationalism is nothing more than a new name for, the, for white supremacism akin to the KKK and how it conducts its meetings, initiation ceremonies, as well as the iconic burning of the cross to intimidate and terrify people. It leaves a strong distaste in my mouth and makes me question, how can people really do this, or how do people think what they're doing is the right thing? It all seems crazy to think this continues today, but there is hope and a way to carry people out of their deep-rooted and brainwashed hatred. Let's take Derek Black, for example. For context, Derek's dad, Don Black, created Stormfront, the biggest white nationalist website in the world, and his godfather was David Duke, a longtime Klan leader of the KKK. Derek, with his father, created a radio show, much like the Infowars we have today, where people who believed in white supremacism could share their stories and experiences. Derek, therefore, grew up as a major voice for white supremacism. These beliefs were normal for him. It's all he ever knew. When Derek and his father produced their radio show, a key point was they refer to themselves as white nationalists instead of white supremacists. They did this to hide in plain sight and normalize these hatred ideas behind the cloak of nationalism. Therefore, it was incredibly powerful that Derek, who was raised in this environment from a young age, was able to change. The biography about him titled Rising Out of Hatred by Eli Soslow documents his transformation. Derek was literally able to rise out of the hatred that he was born into even though this meant cutting off ties with his own family. Derek's story is proof that we can break through someone's mental hate barrier to get to the true person on the other side. If Derek did it, there is hope for others. And exposing hate matters. The Southern Poverty Law Center, otherwise known as the SPLC, is one place that seeks to stop the spread of hate by publicly tracking it around the United States. Their hate map and the sheer number of hate groups that they have tracked is just incredible. To be precise, the SBLC has tracked around 800 hate groups in the United States alone. The map looks like a simple map that you found that you could that can be found on Google, but instead of the red dots pointing pinpointing locations, there are red dots that signify the locations of different hate groups around the country. The map can be filled by ideology, state, years tracked, and estimated mem estimated number of members per group. Even now, it is still extremely hard for the SPLC to narrow down every hate group in the United States. The SPLC does its best to continue to monitor hate groups as well as extremists in other parts of the world. This exploration into hate made me realize just how important it is to stand up to those who try to perpetuate it. It does not matter how old you are, anyone can use their voice to call attention to hateful speech and actions. We need to call out hate groups that hide behind nationalism as if they're patriotic. They are not. The disinformation these groups convey is mere propaganda to incite others. It needs to be called out for what it is so we can stop the spread of hate at its core. 
read a Derek Black story, and look at the work the SPLC does. It will inspire you to act. Our world is only as weak as we make it, and hate has no place in it. Thank you.